Hello, everyone. Today I'm talking with Mark Hansen. He is an otter, author, not an otter. <laughs> I otter be. What a great way to start this off. Uh, he's an author and a game developer, uh, and he's done a lot of other things in the community that I've worked with him on and we've met before. So, first of all, welcome, Mark. Hi. So, what we're going to talk about uh, is partly is this game right here, Heroes Tell. That's a game that you developed. I and my sons together developed. Okay. Let's clarify that. Okay. So it was a group effort. Yeah, very okay. much so. Now on this, I've noticed that the one thing you always have on this, it's a fantasy role playing for family and friends. So uh -huh. I would like to ask you, what do you see is the difference about your game that makes it for family and friends? Um, there's a couple of things. Um, mechanically, it's much more story driven and story focused than a lot of systems. It's nowhere near as rules heavy or as crunchy. Um, for example, an, an obvious one right off the bat is that in our game, the game master is referred to as the narrator. So right from the beginning, in fact, from character creation, you're coming up with story rather than, and combat is rendered as story. Everything is focused on, on the excitement of telling a story. Um, the for family part is because I developed it with my sons together. We came up with the idea. I scribbled down a, a couple of rules, outlines, and we started playing it. And uh, I think like five years later is when we published our first edition. And it went through a lot of changes in that first year. Um, but and, and my sons were pretty young then. They were kind of in mid-teens. And wow, what a bonding experience all that was. Okay. And a lot of that experience, I, I put in another book called Roll Dice, Build Character. And it's kind of a parent's guide to role-playing games and how you can effectively use role-playing games of any kind, whether it's Heroes Tale, Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, whatever, to teach life skills to your kids. Okay. So to me, the, the concept of RPGs and family are intertwined. I don't okay. think there's any better bond with your kids than fighting a dragon together. So from what you're saying, I take it that the impetus for creating your own RPG versus just using someone else's, um, something already out on the market, was that idea of focusing on the story and the mechanics? Yeah, actually, actually, for me, it was more the family angle. Okay. But then as we started doing it, I, I very quickly realized I wanted to focus on the story and less on the media of, I mean, they've, they've got charts and tables for everything in, in some role playing systems, you know? Yeah. And I kind of wanted to back away from that and, and trust the game master to just flow with what's going on rather than counting every copper piece. All right. So I do know because you know I mean, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, I do know that, you know, I've done the review of Heroes Tell, the rule book. And with this, I worked with you. And at SaltCon, I ran a couple of games from this introductory adventure that's in the back of this. Uh -huh. And I'm just going to let people know that I will put up a link to the review I did of the book with Guildmaster Gaming. And I'm in the process of reviewing this one now, The Tale of the Bell Tower Drakes, which is a novice level one. Um, but these are just, you know, two of the items that you've written. And I know that you're a quite, uh, you you write a lot more than just game books. So. Yeah. So. Um, so, okay. So the, the 
the, the sample adventure in the rule book called um, The Haunted Abbey of Hindenburg so that we could get into the game quickly and just jump in and play, I created 12 sample characters. And my son, who was very fascinated with writing fiction at the time, said, Dad, you got to start writing fiction again, because I used to do that a long time ago as I was um, studying creative writing in college. Um, way back in the Jurassic. <laughs> and so he, he convinced me to start doing that again. And um, so I picked those characters and I set the, the story in the world, the sample world that we created for the game, what we'd been play testing for five years at that point. Um, almost all of our adventures were set in this. It's called the world of wind, W-Y-N-N-E. And um, so I picked five characters that became um, the five point of view characters for book one of a tale of heroes. <clears throat> and I really enjoyed doing it. So I kept going. I was posting it, the story, a scene at a time online on a story blog and ended up with two more novels along the way with different five sets of characters would retire and others would come into the story. A um, couple of characters have died. I won't tell you who, that's a spoiler. Um, and they kind of marched their way through. And now and before I'm actually finishing up that, the, the 12 characters now. I've had all 12 in the story. And um, I think when this one is done, I'm going to call that an era and if I continue writing more and win, I'll probably start off with a second generation of characters. But it's been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot as I've been doing the writing. Yeah. So I've noticed, you know, one thing that I know, um, you also illustrated all these books, correct? Uh, yeah. And how, how, is, I, how, how do you feel about the artwork that you do and, and how do you enjoy that? I like doing it. Um, I'm not going to claim to be even close to it, as good as I'm seeing right there on the covers, because um, the covers were done by other people and people who with far more skills than I. But I think the line drawings, the pen and ink line drawings that I do are kind of fun, and so I include them. Good. And I've been getting better over the years. You know, um, John Lennon, Kurt Vonnegut used to include sketches in their book. I think I'm in good company. Yeah, there you go. So you've you've got these books. Uh, you got the two game books and three novels. Is am uh, I missing something there, or is there is there any more pieces to that puzzle? Uh that's pretty much it as far as the fantasy stuff goes. Okay. Um, a long time ago, I was running a, a Dutch oven cooking blog. And that actually got me a publishing contract for about six or seven cookbooks with Cedar Fort Publishing. And that was fun and a great learning experience. So you got, a, you got cookbooks out there along with it. I can, I can respect that. Yeah, well, thank you. But that hasn't been as as fun as that was. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy fiction much more. Okay. So I'm looking... constantly have stories in my head. And they either come out as, as books or they come out as role-playing adventures. Okay. So do you have any more that you've got coming out that people can look forward to? Oh, yeah. So, um, well, there's book four. Yeah. First of all, um, 
I've got this of some and something kind of pattern in the title. Um, book one is of, of children and dragons. Then book two is of wizards and dragons. Book three is of dragons and kings. And book four is of gods and dragons. People getting stronger and stronger. And yeah, and that'll kind of wrap it up with a big climax. Actually, book four, there's there's one character that was not in the sample. Um, and that's the main villain. And um, he's kind of hidden in book one, only makes a couple of appearances. He plays pretty big into book two and three because he's trying to take over the kingdom with the dragons and in, at the end of book three it all goes to pieces uh, the, the whole kingdom and it just everything crumbles okay so that kind like of like a like a house of cards so book four is his redemption arc oh and i'm about halfway through that and it's it's a different kind of writing and it's a very exciting thing to to pull off okay i'm going to make an assumption here i want you to ask just to make sure i'm right since you always kind of focus on being family friendly i take it these are written to more of a young adult audience or yeah yeah okay so they have the, a... the phrase the elevator pitch phrase i use is clean enough for kids and smart mm -hmm. enough for adults yeah there's a lot I mean, of that way. I mean, there's there's fantasy violence in them. Um, but, you know, no nudity, no sex. That's kind of a weird thing when you think about it, that, that something like nudity and sex is forbidden, but you can chop somebody's head off. <laughs> I think it's also, <laughs> I agree with you. One of the things I found. But then again, I don't like reading sex scenes either, so. Yeah. I was going to say the one thing I found is what usually makes it more that way is how it's described. Yeah. You know, it's one yeah. thing to say they kissed. It's another one to say, you know, what, how the kiss was performed. Yeah. So I, I understand. I just like, you know, anybody that's watching, because I have, you know, quite a cross range of people that way, if they're looking for something for their kids, you know, this is something that we can say would be very acceptable for younger readers without any problem that want to read fantasy yeah and um i've had kids as young as 9 10 11 enjoy these books all right particularly book one book one is a little bit lighter it, it it's hard on the characters but books two and three get into some deeper issues that grown-ups understand a little better like prejudice and and um, understanding and and book three is kind of a coming of age book okay. um, but um, kids can still read them and they're you know there's nothing horrible other than fighting nothing. but even that is even the fighting is not glorified that's what I mean. It's how it's described. It's not graphic yeah. visualization of what's going on. So, yeah. So good, good uh, fantasy with some moral support to it and without being graphic. And I also put a heavy emphasis on consequences. That was one of the things that really bothered me about role-playing games as looking back at my teenage years playing role-playing games, but looking back with an adult parent mindset is how often we committed some pretty horrible atrocities with no consequences. The, the story of the, the proverbial murder hobo going into a town and, and basically looting it and what was the worst thing that happened to you? You got experience points and gold. Woohoo! That was pretty pretty bad for you, yeah. right? 
And um, so as I write my stories and as I run my games, if, uh, if people act in bad ways, then bad things are going to happen to them. Okay. That sounds pretty good. Now, you're involved in some other things around in the community, too. Right. And that's one of the things that we uh, have worked on together because we're both members of the League of Utah Writers and we're mm -hmm. both chapter presidents. So we actually yeah. lead other people in their writing skills and helping them develop. <laughs> so, well, well, thanks to your encouragement, I've also gotten a lot of opportunities to present and teach at various things like the, the um, panels at FanX and, and present lessons at various chapters. And um, I'm doing a video presentation in, in the prequels conference this weekend. I am hope I'm feeling well enough to actually be there in person too. Good. I hope so. Yes. I, I'll be there. Yeah. You can talk more. Uh, but I understand how that was. I'm just uh, about a two weeks out from having a second bout of COVID. So yeah. So that was an, a fun experience. What can I say? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I hope you do get feeling well enough for that. So as what is one of the the pleasures you find as being involved with the League of Utah Writers? or being a chapter president and working with people more on a on a personal basis. And and I got to ask so it gets out there. Would you tell us the name that your chapter has adopted? With the disclaimer that this was not my idea. <laughs> that I joined after this decision was made. But we are the flaming gnomes. And apparently the person who did choose that just decided that that would be a silly name to have and ran with it. And when I became chapter president, first of all, I started becoming an active member like six months prior and was enjoying the interactions, the networking, the meeting with people and just having a great time. And then the current president who also did not choose that name said, hey, I'm getting too busy. I need to not be president. And I'd like to hand off the presidency to someone. And is anybody interested? So I emailed her and said, well, tell me what's involved in being a chapter president and what kind of things you have to do. And she said, here, great, have the keys. And, and so I'm chapter president and I've been at about a year and a few months now and I've really enjoyed it actually. So you took over during the pandemic. Yeah. And I know that's a specific set of challenges trying to hold meetings uh, when we're not supposed to be getting together in person. And you know what though, I find for a little while when we first started, I did a hybrid. Mm -hmm. where we're doing face-to-face -face and online meeting of the same meeting. And I found I got a lot more people attending online. And then since, since I've been sick, we've been doing it only online and we still get the same number and just as many, sometimes more people online. So I'm thinking online might be the convenient, enjoyable way for people to do it as opposed to I love meeting face to face. I love interacting with people online too. I don't really care which. Yeah. With the exception of conferences. If if I'm at a conference, I want to be there interacting, networking, meeting people. I've met so many cool people at Quills and Prequill and and these other conferences. Uh, LTUE, Life the Universe and everything. So many great people at all of those conferences. I'd love to, um, yeah. But I, I, and I've attended some conferences virtually, but I just, 
it's just not as much fun. I, I'll agree I on that. I agree. So kind of talking about conferences, what is your schedule coming up that people, if they wanted to get a chance to meet you uh, in person and, you know, kind of be able to look at your wares, uh, your books, your game books, um, what are some of the conference and events that you've got on the schedule coming up for this year of 2023? Oh, okay. This is kind of interesting because, you know, authors traditionally have a difficult time with marketing, right? Yeah. And my online marketing is horrible. I love, and again, this is going to depend on, on my physical health uh, going forward, but I love setting up a booth and interacting with people as they walk by. So I do a lot of uh, farmer's markets. I do as many conferences as I can afford. And that is just so much fun. Okay. And um, so starting in June, I'm going to be doing the Eagle Mountain City Festival. They call it Pony Express Days. And then I'll be doing a couple of, of the Eagle Mountain Farmer's Markets. And our chapter is doing a book sale in front of a grocery store here in Eagle Mountain um, the Saturday before Pony Express Days. That would be the, the 27th, the last Saturday in May. So we'll be out there with a the table and our books in front of the store. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, that also helps me encourage all of my um, chapter members to um, work on their, you know, if they choose to self-publish, to work on, or even if they have traditionally published books, to bring them and present them. Anyway, so we'll be doing a few, actually all summer long, I'll be doing um, farmer's markets like every other week or so here okay. in Eagle Mountain. Um, it's funny because a small town like Eagle Mountain, I actually make more sales per hour than I do in some of the bigger shows, but I love doing the bigger shows too. Okay. So I'm just going to throw this out there real quick. So people know that are listening to this. If they don't know where Eagle Mountain is, that uh, is west of Provo, Utah. So you have Utah Lake and you're kind of on the west side of the lake over there, uh, out there where they say Saratoga Springs south of Harriman. Past Lehigh. Yeah, down past Lehigh, that area. So if you're in the area of Utah Valley, I mean, that's a very easy place to go to. And even if you're in Salt Lake Valley and Tooele, there's some easy access to get to Eagle Mountain and check out some of those places that you're talking about. Yeah, and we're going to be in Fan X. Um, so for Salt Lake City, that's going to be one there and that's and, in september yeah in september we're doing salt con the gaming convention in layton at the end of also the end of september yeah the end of summer event yeah the end of summer event. Yeah, i believe that's the end of july but i'm i don't want to commit it right okay and then so we're going to be way up north for that and then um in early November, I think it is, we've got two shows. We've got um, TimpCon, which is a gaming convention in uh, downtown Provo at the yep. convention center there, uh, which is a lot like SaltCon, a little smaller, but it's a great time. And then we've got the three-day family Christmas gift show in um, Sandy at the Sandy Convention Center. Okay. So over the course of the year, we're going to be mixing it up all over. Yep. And you said you got prequels this weekend and also possibly the Quills Conference, uh, Quills, both yeah. of Utah writers, and that's in August. Right. But those I'm just attending. Those I'm not so much. Okay. With a booth or a table selling stuff, I'm just being another writer, hanging out and with my, my friends. Get together and do some good networking and 
Yeah, and, and just talk. And learn a few things in the in the sessions, and it's a great time. Okay, so seriously, it is one of the reasons why I love that, actually, and one why I love doing the the chapter meetings as well is is writing is really a very solitary art, right? You just sit in your little corner with your laptop and you write. And to me, it's even more fun when you get out at the shows and interact with people. That's a hard time in the winter because I'm not interacting, you know? And uh, you go to the conferences and you interact with other writers. You go to a writer's meeting and you know, make friends and hang out. Yep. That's cool. Yep. Fuels the motivation. Okay. So we got the conventions coming up that you've mentioned. We know, you know, you've got some other things that you might be working on in terms of books or stories uh, that will be coming out uh, either as adventures uh -huh. or books. So as a president, you've got that going on. So I'm going to ask... Something I usually ask writers and authors, especially if they have a few books out, is if you have someone come to you and they're a new writer and they say, how do I make it as a writer? If I want to become a writer and author, what point of advice would you give them? Well, the first one is pretty obvious. It's just to start writing. Um, And to, you have to do a kind of a balancing act between wanting it to be as good as it can be and not worrying so much about it being perfect. Right? Yeah. If you worry a lot about it being perfect, you'll never get anything finished and shared. If you... Don't worry about making it good enough. Then you just grind out garbage. So you try and do your best. You study and you learn and you get better and you get critique groups and you get editors and you do all these things to make it as good as it can be. But you got to try not to let that paralyze you and keep you from getting it done and out there. I think that's one of the biggest things that I see happening a lot of the the gnomes group is um, uh, early writers beginning writers and I see it a lot sometimes people have two or three manuscripts they're working on and, and they just can't seem to finish them or they have them finished but they just can't trust putting it out there um, and I get it people write for different reasons I'm fine with that but if I can help somebody overcome that and get it finished or get it shared then that's an exciting thing for me too like my son worked five years and just finished his first novel The Queen's Game All right, and uh I edited it and on um, so it's available on Amazon and I'm quite proud of him, especially since he was the one that convinced me to start writing fiction. It was exciting to see him finish it. Okay. So and that'll be on our table when we go right. out. Okay, so since you're saying his is on Amazon, I take it that your game books and your novels are also available on Amazon if people want them? Right. And the easy way to get to that, we kind of, my sons and I, we kind of put together our, our company called windmillcrusaders.com. <laughs> and, um, and yes, that is a reference to Don Quixote. We're kind of like the little guys tilting at windmills thinking we can actually do something about gaming and, and publishing. 
Um, so we're the, the windmill crusaders and uh, it has links to where you can get um, the hero's tale, a tale of heroes, queen's game. Uh, Jacob also designed a uh, quick playing uh, family dice game called worm heist. And uh, there's also a uh, scripture based card game. Oh, that's right. So there's all kinds of stuff where we've got our fingers in. Yeah, you know, yeah. Thank you for reminding me about that. I had forgotten about your scripture game because I had reviewed that. Uh, that was how I, way a long time ago. It's been out for a yep. while. There was a. We were we had a little. In fact, all we had was just that game. We didn't have any of the other role playing games or novels. And we had this booth at a tiny anime convention in West Valley. Tiny little. Is that a two-day thing, one-day thing? I don't remember. But you had a booth for Geek, Actually, Utah Geek magazine or something was, like that? I was covering for Utah Geek on some different things. Didn't actually have a booth with them, but uh, not there. But well, you were probably, sitting yeah. at a booth when I, when I met you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I sneak into a lot of people's booths to rest my feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're always welcome to kick your, kick your heels up on my table. <laughs> Yeah. Anytime you want to. Yeah, just to kind of give me a little a, bit of credibility. <laughs> yeah, the last time I went to Gen Con, I, I tracked it and I put in some like 15 miles in three days. Uh, at Salt Con, I usually in three days usually put in about nine, 10 miles. Mm -hmm. uh, last Saturday or the Saturday, yeah, last Saturday they were doing this big Dead Wars event in Provo. I was working with Dax Levine on that as one of his uh helper dms he called them captains and one day i, I uh, seven I'm miles sad that i missed it <laughs> so that's the reason why I you, and you were there and jared was there and well uh, of course that actually was there he was running the thing yeah some some other people a couple that, of other yeah some of the other people i know writers or the league were john maybe was there yeah j rod who is a poet yeah uh, and let's see, um, Talissa Sainz was supposed to be there, who is uh, a nationally recognized award-winning editor. So, mm -hmm. so there was a lot of fun people there. Uh, it's hard to say there yeah. wasn't many people there since there was over 1,200. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was the whole point. So, yeah. But I was, I wasn't feeling very well, so. Yep. Yeah. That comes first. All right. Yeah. So we I'm gonna make sure to put up a link to windmillcrusaders.com so people can see that and uh, be able to go in and check out your site. And I will also put in a link to I wrote a note to not only your Heroes Quest game, but I will also put in a link to the scripture game. I cannot remember its name right now. I can once you said it, I could remember what the cards looked like. Seekers Quest. Seeker's Quest. So I will also uh, put a link to that. So Actually, if you do Windmill Crusaders, you can link to all this stuff. Yeah. Okay. So we'll put so, those in. So. All right. So do you have any last words you'd like to share with everybody? Uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be on your podcast. Thank everybody else for reading the books. And that's that's one of the things that I love about doing the shows and the markets is when people come back and buy book two because they read book one. That's an exciting thing. Um, yeah. Okay, you're welcome. So... If you have a friend that's an author, the best birthday present you can give them is to buy their book, read it, and then ask them questions about the characters and just watch them go nuts because nobody ever does that. And it's so thrilling. And I'm going to throw in one other thing that's a good thing to do for authors. If you are buying through Amazon, leave a review. 
Their algorithms yeah, really play a weird sense of how things get promoted. And if you don't do Amazon, leave a review where you can, be it Goodreads or any place else that you actually have that opportunity to do so. That's even a just a plug on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Even there, just your social media saying, I read this and I enjoy it. That's a really good thing to do. So on that, I'm going to ask people right now, just to remember, if you like what we're doing here uh, with this channel, please subscribe to this YouTube channel because that will provide, it's just like we were talking about the algorithms of Amazon and the others that gives different benefits and opportunities of what we can do uh, in terms of presentation and also who we can get as guests on the show and be able to talk from there. So again, we'd like to thank Mark for joining me. Uh, and remember, if you want to reach out and get in touch with Mark, check out windmillcrusaders.com and you can find out his whole selection of role-playing games and card game, other games now I'm finding out from your family and so forth, and your novels. So congratulations, Mark. And uh, we'll talk to everybody later. Thank you very much.